You've had a Hive Mini installed inside your property, but you have no clue how to use it. Strap in for this video, I've got the Hive app ready to go and I've got a Hive Mini in my property. This video will also work for the Hive original thermostat and any other thermostat they bring out in the near future. So let's jump into the app. I've got two cameras on so you can see the screen and let's get to it. When you first open the app, you are met with what devices you have on your network. I personally have the Hive Mini thermostat and then two TRVs set up across my home. There is a third one, but it's for my bathroom, which is currently out of battery. So that's why it says bathroom at the bottom. Straight away, you can see at the top, I've got house at 21.7 degrees, because that's what temperature my living room is currently at. You then look at the attic and that is at 17.6 degrees, because I've got a TRV up there, which just isn't getting to the temperature I want it to. I've got it set to heat up to 20 degrees, which will take quite some time as the insulation up there is awful and I think the windows let air in, so I'm not surprised it's quite cold. If you want to see a review about the Hive TRVs, I've just done the video, so check it out up here. Watch that, I think you should pick them up, they're a great piece of kit, despite them slightly not working today. In the Hive app, you have Home, Trends and Manage. Trends basically shows you what your heating's like, how long you've had the heating on for. It can sometimes guess how much you've spent, which is quite a nice feature if you want to keep an eye on that too. Going into the heating history, you will see for today, the max indoor temperature was 21.6 and the total time heating was two hours and 26 minutes, which as you can imagine, it's probably cost me a, quite a bit of money, um, but you can see the times there, it's between 1 a.m. and 8 a.m. So that's when the house has been heating up because of the really cold temperatures outside. So from here, we're gonna go to house and it's gonna show us the section we actually care about. So you've got the control section, which shows 21.7 degrees, saying it's reached the temperature we're reaching for, uh, as I've got it set to 21 degrees. Big orange circle in the middle, that allows you to change the temperature no matter where you are in the world, as long as you have an internet connection. Uh, you can set it to 24, you can all the way up to 32, but I don't want to kill the dogs at home, so we'll go back down to 21. Then in, underneath that, you've got boost. So let's say you wake up and it's absolutely freezing inside your home. You go down to your kitchen and your tiles are horrible and cold. You can boost the heating up to let's say 22, 23 to really pick up the heat nice and quickly, but it will of course use more gas costing you more money. This is currently on the manual section where I just change it whenever I feel like it, which can be quite inefficient, but for me, it's always on 21 degrees. It never goes off, it never goes up, it, it just stays at 21 degrees. Middle section is schedule. Now this is great for those people who have a busier life, they don't have dogs at home, and they like the heating to come on in the morning to make it nice and warm, go off around lunchtime, etc etc to set this schedule you go into the middle row which is schedule and you've got there monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday saturday and you can set whatever schedule you want for whatever day you fancy really really intuitive app really nice and easy to set times if thursday i wanted to start earlier than half six or half five i can do that it's a very easy to use app click done on there uh, and that sets the time saturday sunday all nice and easy if you were wanting to do a schedule i would let the boiler drop down to around five degrees never go to zero because a your house will never actually get there and if it does it means it's going to be freezing so you keep it around five just to stop that boiler from freezing up if you get a frozen condensate pipe or the boiler doesn't get antifrost protected you might end up with a broken boiler so that's the scheduling tab quite easy to use the app as i said has had loads of money spent on it so it's really easy to use over in the top right you've got a little graph there which shows you your heating history but as again you need a trial to use the extra features settings in the top right you can change your device information you can rename the device geolocation which we'll get to in a bit holiday mode, efficiency alerts, and ready buy. So that's a really nice part of the app too. Finally, we've got actions. Now actions is one of the new things I'm not really got into yet. And this is basically where you can use door sensors or window sensors inside your home to trigger certain things within the app. For example, you press the plus button, you've got heat down, lights off when the bedroom door closes, which is a really cool thing to think about. So if I have a door sensor on my bedroom door, when I go up to the attic, go to bed and close the door, the lights downstairs will all turn off, the bedroom lights will go down a little bit, and the heating can turn slightly off as I'm getting into bed where I'll already be nice and warm. There is a plethora of things you could do with this. You could do turn the heating on when the front door opens, turn it off when the front door closes, uh, when your cat flap opens, turn the heating down. There's so many things you could do with these things. It's just all about coming up with the ideas inside your head and putting them into place. I think later on in the year, I might experiment with a few of these. At the moment though, because my heating is just on all the time at 21 degrees, I don't have to worry about it. Even when I go on holiday or I'm you know, away with work, there's always someone in the house looking after the dogs 
so the heat has to be on. They really spoil them dogs. Other than manual and schedule, you can of course click off at the very bottom, which just turns the heating off. Now, in a very insulated home, this is a great feature to use as it can keep that temperature around 20 degrees. But then when it comes to nighttime and it's minus three outside, your house is gonna get very cold. So only use that if you are in the summer, you don't wanna use any gas whatsoever. There's no point having it. Your windows will be open. It's already nice and warm or if you are selling the house maybe, but I wouldn't really recommend that because it might be horrible when people visit the house and go for tours. Oh, it's really cold in there. It doesn't put them in a good mindset. So the off feature I'd only use in the summertime, but your boiler is probably gonna be off anyway, unless it's a combi. Going into the settings icon, as we showed you before, the device information just tells you more about the hive you've got and the firmware it's on. Sometimes if you're ever facing any issues with the app or the thermostat itself, it's because the firmware isn't right, so you will need an update. There will be plenty of videos out there about how to update the stat. Then you've got rename device. So if you wanted to call it something different, or maybe you've got a few properties or you're a landlord with rental properties, you wanna label it with the address, you know where you're at. Maybe you've got one installed at your family's house or your parents that are a bit elderly. You could have one for my house and grandparents' house so you can control it nice and easily. Then you've got geolocation, which I think is a great feature. I'm actually going to activate this live now on camera. So that's activated now. That shows where we are. So I'm going to have to blur that out. And this now means that when I'm leaving the office, it'll say, do you want to turn your heating off or turn it on? Ideally, you want to do this at the house. So I probably should have filmed this somewhere else. This is a great feature. This means that when I leave the house in the morning, I'm on my way to work. I'll get notified on the phone saying, your heating has been left on, are you sure you want to do this? For me, of course, I do want it to be on because I have it on all the time, but if you forget or you're in a rush in the morning, one of the worst things you can find out is when you get home, not only have you had an awful day, you were late to work, you saw a car crash on the way, you also had your heating on full the entire day costing you a load of money. So great feature, I like it a lot. Also, it has the same feature when you return to home. So let's say you are I think it's 700 feet away, how many feet? Yeah, so leaving home it's 700 feet, arriving back home it's a mile. So when I get a mile away from my home, it gets notified, do you want to turn your heating on? The heating comes on and makes sure it's around 20 to 21 degrees, which is a great feature if no one is home. This is where the hive saves you a lot of money, as with a manual thermostat, it wouldn't know where you are in the world, so your heating would just be on no matter what. Holiday mode is a great feature, let's say you're going to Dubai, let's say for two weeks. So you set the date you're leaving, which let's say we're going on I know the, the 16th of April, uh, 26th of April, 2024, and you're coming back on November the 2nd. Let's say something outrageous. It will then set the holiday time in the app and it will turn your heating off or lower it to whatever setting you set until you get back. This is so you aren't just spending loads of money during the weeks you're away. And it also means when you come back from the airport, you've had a really horrible flight, although with Dubai, I doubt you will. You land, come into your home, and it's nice and warm for when you get back. Great feature of the app especially if you're on holiday a lot, which you're very lucky if you do. So efficiency alerts, yet again, is a paid feature, which can sort you out your efficiency wise if you want to pay for the subscription. I don't bother using it as my heating's on all the time, as I keep saying throughout this video, but if you are the type to change things, have schedules, that trial may be worth it. Down at the very bottom then, it has ready buy. Now I can't use the ready buy feature because I've got a TRV across my home, but it can basically calculate how long it takes for your house to actually get ready, how to get warm, which is so, so intelligent and it can adjust day to day so that if it knows it's gonna be minus six outside, it knows when to start heating up the home. So all the time when you come downstairs eight o'clock, your boil is at the temperature you set it to. So very, very intelligent. It just shows so much has gone into this product and the intelligence behind it is really, really impressive. So that is it for the app really. Other than that, it's got a battery logo to show you how much battery is left on the thermostat. Mine's pretty much brand new, so the battery's of course full. The status bar there just shows you the signal to the boiler and the receiver. Um, if there's any alerts on there, just check your distances and check your batteries. Other than that, that is pretty much the app. I don't think there's much more to it. If you have any confusion or questions, drop in the comment section down below and I'll get back to you. Um, Hive TRVs, if you've got any, they're just right underneath. You set the schedule, you set your off times. Exactly the same as the thermostat, just it's on your radiator. So not much to it on that one. One thing I have noticed with the app is that it has this let's fix it where it does self-diagnosis all the time to kind of fix the problem itself or let you know what the issue is. So you can have a refer back to an engineer or someone who's a bit more tech savvy on the day. So, so yeah, that is it. That is the Hive app as simple as it is. And we have had some messages on customer service saying that they have had some trouble. So I thought I'd make this video so the staff can just send it out straight away and you guys can get your Hive system back online. If you have a Hive original, a lot of these features will be on the actual device itself. So maybe you want to watch a different video about that. But for now, at our heat, all we sell is the Hive Mini, which you can actually add to your order on the day. So 
Head to iHeat.co.uk, get a quote, send us a few photos, and we can be there the very next day to install your brand new boiler. Also, in the add ons section, make sure you add a Hive Mini so you can get started with this video. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. This has been iHeat.